G'day there guys, really far away Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoy today's bloody good stories. Once again, I am not in a jail cell. Uh, with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and enjoy today's bloody good stories. Let's go. Posted by user Dangerous East 6962 titled, My Wife and Her Ex-Husband. My wife, 45 female, was married to Bob, 46 male, for almost a decade. They got divorced 12 years ago. There's a story behind it. Bob and my wife were college sweethearts. They got married very young and were happy. However, tragedy struck and Bob got into an accident which led him to be paralyzed from the waist down. My wife was 29 and Bob was 30 back then. My wife took care of him for three years, but at the end, she just gave up. She told Bob that she couldn't do this anymore. She knows she sounds selfish, but she always wanted kids, and Bob couldn't have kids after the accident. She wanted to get a divorce, but promised him that she will always be there for him. She just wants to be selfish for once. Bob, although he was upset, understood. They split amicably. My wife stood by her promise and still visited Bob. She was still a part-time caretaker for him before she met me. I, 40 male, meet her two years after her divorce. While we were dating, she made her situation with Bob clear that she will continue to see him. I know a lot of guys would be skeptical about this, but I just loved her at the moment I saw her. Her kindness and compassion towards others is what drew me towards her. After we became official, she only went to see Bob once a week, sometimes even twice. I did not mind then. In fact, I liked her ex very much. He didn't treat me like I was the other man. He was always welcoming towards me, and he even showed me his library. I always felt bad for what happened to him. He was a great man, and life had just betrayed him. When we got married, I could still see the sadness in his eyes, although there was a mix of emotions from him. I always felt that Bob never stopped loving my wife, and to some degree, my wife still has feelings for him. I know that she loves me a lot. She has always treated me like I'm her king, and always showed her love to me. Seriously, I am really lucky to have her in my life. Together, we have two children, seven male, five female. My kids are also close with Bob. Everything was fine until a few months ago. We got the news that Bob has cancer. It was at the last stage, and he might not even survive a full year, but there is still a possibility. The news really shattered my wife. She had stopped eating properly and being her usual cheerful self. I understand it, but here's the part where I'm a little uncomfortable with. She now visits him very often. Most of the time I'll be there with her, and then a few weeks after the discovery, she told me she wants to shift into his house. She told me that Bob feels lonely, and his siblings do not care about him since his accident, and it'll be better if she would just stay with him. I objected. We had an argument, and we reached a compromise that we are both going to stay there, so I've been staying at Bob's house for two weeks now. Four days ago, we were all having dinner, and after we were finished, I decided to do the dishes. My wife and Bob were chatting, and the conversation went like this. He says, I really missed this. I miss talking to you like the good old times. And she says, me too. Remember one time we talked so much that we were late for work the next day? It wasn't even important. And he says, what happened to us, Lily? I mean, we were something. People would use us as an example. I miss you a lot. I never thought that when I was dying, you wouldn't be my wife anymore. And my wife replies, I know. At, at one point, I thought that too, but life had other plans. I mean, I love you, but I love my family more. It, it wasn't the same after your accident. It is as if they forgot that I was in the kitchen and listening in to their conversation. My wife was normal after that. We went to bed and kissed each other goodnight. Between this, she wanted to make love to me, but I just rejected her. I don't know how to feel about all of this. I trust my wife. I know she is a strong woman with good morals. She will never cheat on me. I know she's just sympathetic towards Bob because their relationship was beyond just exes. They are best friends. 
I feel like an intruder between them, and I think, no matter what my opinion is about all of this, I will always be the bad guy. In the comments, Beneficial Syrup says, You are not the bad guy in any way, OP. Please know that. You need to talk to your wife about what you heard. Then you need to get counselling with her, and possibly Bob. Because when Bob does pass, you want to have everything settled. Because she may start saying shit like, I lost the most important man to me. And then you're going to be severely pushed over the edge. And OP says, Therapy sounds good. I guess I knew deep down it would come to this. OP replies to a deleted comment and says, I don't think you understand. You're just assuming. She divorced because she was full-time his caretaker and couldn't do that any longer. Their marriage failed for that reason. There was no intimacy, no romance. She had a version of what kind of family she wanted, and she has been clear with him since the beginning. She was young back then and had her whole life ahead of her. Now we have children, and our situation is very different from her first marriage. I know that if I get injured, she will not leave me. She is also in a better financial position than she was 12 years ago, and we can hire nurses if one of us becomes injured. And I don't mind her going once a week to see Bob. Bob is also my friend too. I also visit him sometimes along with my wife. She spends time with me a lot. She has no other family except for Bob. Farmer Scrooge says, This story makes me sad for all of you. It's understandable. She's been completely upfront about this with you. She loves him and feels guilty that she couldn't stay with him and have the life that she wanted. It's very sad. You would not have your wife if not for this accident. I wouldn't like this arrangement. It would be very uncomfortable, but you did sign up for this. How are your kids processing all of this? And OP replies, They are mostly sad. Bob is getting weaker every second. They don't know he'll be dying, but they are happy to see Bob. Scarecrow25 says, This is difficult for many reasons. Reading your post, it almost sounds like you want to be jealous, but I doubt that's really it. If it were jealousy, I feel that you would have had a problems long ago. Have you considered that you're grieving for Bob, the man that you called a friend? Is it easier to be upset or hurt at your wife than to face his demise? It doesn't sound like there's anything for you to worry about from this relationship itself. It's just difficult emotionally, and that's understandable. You really should see a therapist to help you work through your emotions so you can be there to support your wife and children when he passes away. It won't be helpful if you're still suppressing both the hurt of knowing that your wife loves someone else and the loss of a friend. And OP says, I'm devastated that I'm losing a dear friend of mine. I mean, Bob never ever tried to hurt me or make me feel like a third man or a man who came in between him and my wife. In 2020, I went into a deep depression due to the stress of losing my job in COVID. Bob, even though he was disabled, helped me and motivated me to keep going. He's a really good guy. Maybe you're right. I'm still in a mix of emotions. F.S. Mertz says, I don't quite understand what the problem is here. Your wife's relationship with Bob is unique, driven by external events. He has been very understanding considering that she up and abandoned her marriage to him. The fact that the three of you are able to support him to the end is very honourable, and your wife's accepting your presence in Bob's house shows you have a strong marriage. The conversation you are sharing bits of is very touching. I would not feel threatened at all by it. Bob is frickin' dying, he's going to say anything, and what he said is very understandable, and your wife's response is sensitive too. I'm sure she has a colour of love for him. He didn't do anything negative to her, unlike what she did to him. Perhaps her spending time helping him in his last days is her way of rectifying her leaving the marriage. So, what's your issue here? Additionally, this is a reflection of how good this woman would treat OP if the same would have happened to him. She has a good heart. Frankly, the two need this closure, and when Bob is gone, she'll have a clear conscience. But if he's disabled, she'll abandon him. She hasn't abandoned Bob. He's got cancer, and she moved her family in with him to care for him. She never stopped caring for him and taking care of him. Man, I'm more sympathetic to Bob. 
No offense, but he had to watch his wife leave him and move on because of something out of his control, and he has to watch you and her have kids and be a family, the life that he wanted. Then he has to die early. Life sucks sometimes. Well, when you look at it that way, yeah, sucks to be Bob. Man, it does actually make me feel quite torn up inside for Bob. That conversation, I don't know, it, it struck a real deep chord inside of me and I just feel so incredibly sad for him. And you know, on the bright side, yeah, OP's wife is coming in to take care of him and hasn't stopped caring for him her whole life, but that's only a consolation to the life that could have been. I, I yearn for the life that Bob could have had. And as everyone else said here before, it's, it's through no fault of his own. She didn't do anything particularly wrong. I feel like she's making the best of her circumstances. She's doing the most she can while still putting herself first. But Bob has done nothing wrong. And that is, that's just life sometimes. Life is so cruel. Life can sometimes as well be amazing and the best thing ever. But for Bob in this situation, I feel so bad for him. To get cancer on top of everything else as well as being paralyzed... I want to go out and hug Bob. Man, this this sucks. And now, on to the update. Alright, I took some of the advice that you guys gave me. Although I was disappointed to see so many emotional people calling me and my wife names without even trying to understand the situation, this will be a long one. Before I give an update, I want to make a few things clear. My wife is awful because she abandoned her husband? No. I disagree with that. There's a space between terminating a marriage and abandoning. She didn't abandon Bob. She was right by his side. She was not just his wife. I can understand why. She was 29 when this happened, and at 29, people are still starting their lives. But her life and her husband's life ended there. You expect her to give up her life, her hopes, and her dreams? And what then? Resent Bob for the rest of her life? Caretaking can be exhausting. She was emotionally, physically, and financially drained while she was taking care of Bob. Would you have still expected her to give up her life if this happened when she was 21? It's not like she didn't try. They went to therapy and did counseling, but there was no romance, no intimacy. They just grew apart because they both had different dreams. Despite all of that, she was still in his life. She still took care of him. She could have disappeared after her divorce, but she didn't. That's what you call abandonment? Also, the reason why I didn't give all the details was because this was not about her old marriage. But now, I'm making it clear because people are assuming things. I know most of your things are black and white, but from a logical perspective, I don't think she's wrong. My wife and Bob are having an emotional affair. Also, no. People who have affairs are secretive. My wife was never like that. She was always upfront and honest about her relationship with Bob, and how she would still want to care about him. I do not think that there is any affair, just because she said she still loves him? So what? She says I love you to her kids, her friends, and even my mother. That doesn't mean that she's having an affair with all of them. She has kept a boundary between Bob and her. She doesn't love him romantically, but like a friend or a family. She doesn't have her own family. She has been no contact with her abusive family since she was 18. Bob was the only family she has ever known. If my wife wanted kids, why didn't she just adopt or do IVF? Like I said in my previous post, she was financially drained. IVF costs a lot here, and adoption with a disabled parent is hard. The agencies hesitate to give a child when one parent is not functional. Then again, they would still need money. My wife wanted children of her own, and if they had chosen either of those routes, she would have been the one taking care of the baby most of the time, along with her husband. Bob almost went broke during all the caretaking. It wasn't until a few years ago that he started a remote job that allowed him to stay at home and earn. My wife will leave me if the same thing happened to me. I doubt it. But even if she does, I would understand it. We talked about this before getting married, that if we have tried every possible option, then one of us can divorce. I do not want to be a burden on my own wife. 
And we're both in our 40s. We've pretty much accomplished every goal in life. So if tragedy does strike, then we're prepared. Bob loves my wife. He could, but there's not much that I can do about it. I mean, I can't order him to stop loving, but he does have some feelings for her. Whether it's limerence or not, I do not know. Though Bob was in a long-term relationship for five years with a girl, I do not think his love for my wife is the same as romantic love. What about my kids? Our kids are here for a while, and they live with their grandmother. I do not see why people are acting like we abandoned our kids. Our kids love Bob. They do not know that Bob is my wife's ex-husband. They only know that Bob is my wife's friend. They are not mature enough to understand it. And now, on to the update. I took your advice. I just wanted to do the talk when she wasn't stressed. I texted my wife to meet us in our house, not Bob's. I ordered her favorite food and set up the table. When she arrived, she was surprised to see the setup, and I just told her that since she has been stressed lately, I wanted to do something good for her. I called my mother. The kids are with her. Bob is staying at the hospital today, so he's fine too, and she can relax. She was happy and thanked me. We talked about our life, and she vented about her job and everything that's been going on. Then I dropped the bomb about her conversation with Bob. I told her about the conversation she was having with Bob and how it made me feel. Well, I like Bob, and I know she loves me too, but I cannot help but imagine her wanting to be with him, and it's really like a stab. Though I do appreciate her wanting to help Bob, I want to enforce boundaries. I cannot live forever in her ex's house. We have our own house. She needs to think about our kids too. I feel like day by day, I'm losing her. This is just my concern and not insecurity. I expected her to flip out and become defensive, but she just cried a lot. She said that she didn't mean to hurt me. She knows she went too far with wanting to stay with Bob. She says she doesn't want Bob to feel alone. That's why she proposed it. And she feels sorry for not listening. She didn't mean to hurt me. She's been thinking about the living situation, and I told her it's not enough. I wanted us to talk to a therapist. This whole thing is just a burden on me. She got scared and said, Why? Nothing's wrong with us. And I told her I want to do this, just to make sure that we're on the same page and that there's no hard feelings on either side. Then I asked her if she still wishes to be with Bob, because if he didn't have the accident, they would still be together. She told me that she has wasted time thinking about what if. She knows we'd probably never meet, or she and Bob could have divorced for a different reason. The thing is, she doesn't want to think about it. What happened just happened. She loves me and doesn't want to be with Bob. Bob has a place in her heart as a friend and as family. When she said she loves Bob, she doesn't mean she's in love with him. She hasn't thought about him in a romantic way since their divorce. The only reason she stuck with Bob was because they promised to each other that no matter what happens, they will be with each other, even as a friend. She proposed that we move back home and only stay one day a week in Bob's house. She might do occasional visits when it's needed. I agreed, but I still insisted on going to therapy, and she agreed to it. We have yet to tell Bob about the news, but I'm sure he'll understand. And before you ask, yes, Bob has a full-time nurse. He has family, but they hardly ever visit him. I'll probably not make an update again, and I'm done. No matter how much I try to explain it to you guys, you would only stick to seeing things in either black or white. Apparently in the Reddit world, two exes remaining good friends is considered an emotional affair. They don't need context to understand things. I'm also very much drained emotionally. Bob is also my friend. Seeing him getting weak every day just makes me feel hopeless too. In the comments, Beneficial Syrup says, I'm glad that you had that conversation with her. I'm rooting for you. And yes, therapy. I always feel like therapy is like an oil change. It is maintenance. If you don't do it, you're screwed. But if you keep at it, you'll be running smoothly. I have a few therapists in my family, so maybe their influence. She may need individual therapy too. There is a lot to unpack for her. And OP says, Yes, we talked about that. Sorry I forgot to mention that in my post. I told her that she needs to face the ugly reality that Bob might not be in our lives. She needs to prepare for that. She needs therapy for herself to navigate those feelings. And she agreed to that. 
OK Breakfast says, Communication. As much as people would like to vilify the two of you, you are both admirably navigating a sea of grey and doing the best that you can. I'm disappointed by this sub's inability to do nuance. Marriage is nuanced. Marriage requires comfort with grey areas. Marriage requires constant give and take. Thank you for sharing with us. And OP says, Yup, I think people are way too self-righteous to think about any other possible solution. Yes, morally, she should have stayed with her ex and spent the rest of her life taking care of him no matter how emotionally draining it is, but practically, it makes no sense. You're a good man, and so is your wife. People who agree don't tend to comment. I read your first post, and it gave me all the feels, but I didn't comment. People who want to complain often do. Just ignore them. Yelzy says, This is how mature, reasonable adults handle life situations. Your wife's conversation with Bob wasn't okay, but the way that you handled it and her reaction means that there is a path forward. I wish you guys and Bob the best of luck. OP says, I agree, but she told me that it was just nostalgia, but the conversation we had was needed. It made some things clear. Such a bittersweet story. Everyone here feels so much more mature than I am. I would never be able to make the choices that they made. Neither could I, but I think it's good to know when you'd be incapable of doing something in a healthy way. Opie and his wife, and Bob, sound like genuinely good and decent people. I hope Bob's passing is peaceful, and that things work out for OP and his wife. They sound like they have healthy communication, and Bob could easily leverage his cancer diagnosis against OP, but doesn't seem to be the type to do so. That is certainly a complicated situation, but not impossible. And again, I kinda wanna roll up in a ball and cry, because there is no winning in this situation, and, you know, I didn't, when I read that comment, think that what they did was wrong. Like the conversation felt a bit too real and it did feel a bit awkward with OP there because it's like obviously this isn't something that OP would want to hear but what do you do? We've seen situations like this before and there was another story where that love letter from the deceased ex came out and it just completely destroyed I think it was the wife in that story? And I guess at that point, I thought it was selfish of them to have sent that letter beyond the grave. But it's, there's always nuance in life, isn't there? So in this situation, I think it's okay for them to have that not okay conversation because OP and the wife talked about it afterwards and agreed to a solution going forward. Yeah, we. I'm thrown through a loop because... This is such a mature way to handle everything. We do I don't ever see this. I see children bickering and screaming at each other and just craziness. And I'm so touched by people having normal, acceptable, emotional, amazing solutions to these problems. I wish we had more stories like this, but at the same time, I do love content. I'm just going to close it with saying I wish you and your wife the best going forward. I hope that Bob passes peacefully and surrounded by those that he loves. It's never easy losing someone close to you, but that's just life sometimes. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave you today. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. I uh, do hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.